and while Ichi Boots gets to ride a Honda CRF 300L through the expansive landscapes of exotic and distant civilizations, I get to ride Chinese bike up Shevin. Make engines for their bikes if they weren't 100%. Hey up and welcome to another bike review out of Apple Yards in Keithley. Apple Yards here, part of the Moto GB group and a well-established dealership here in Keithley in West Yorkshire. Get yourselves down here, plenty of stock both for new bikes and used bikes and a very helpful and knowledgeable staff with plenty of demonstrators for you. So get yourself down. Now then, today I'm going to be taking out the Vosges. 300 Rally, the obvious competitor to the Honda CRF 300L. So uh, let's climb aboard and see what she's all about. Right then, so there she is, the Vosges 300 Rally, or Rally 300. And uh, quite a big bike considering it's only 300cc, 300cc single. We'll uh, talk about the numbers on the walk around, but uh, thanks again to Apple Yards for the loan of this bike. Thank you for Kieran for sorting me out administratively uh, this morning. And uh, let's climb aboard and uh, see what all the fuss is about. So, yeah, the Vosges Rally 300. So, yeah, the Vosges Rally 300 or 300 Rally. And uh, Chinese bike, Chinese made. It's made by uh, a conglomerate called the uh, Lonsin, Lonsin Group. And uh, they currently work in collaboration with BMW, would you believe? Um, engine wise. And once in, produce engines for, or some of the smaller engines for BMW bikes. I think the uh, F750 GS is one of them. So one would expect the engine to uh, be uh, pretty durable. And it is for all the world, uh, very obviously, a single cylinder, uh, <coughs> single cylinder engine. And... Uh, Yes, it is a bit buzzy. I can feel that right away through the seat of my pants. It feels almost like one of them there machines that Ian Botham advertises for his feet. Only for your backside. I suppose you get used to it. In fact, come to think of it, it's not at all unpleasant, but anyway, enough of that. So yeah, a bit, bit buzzy uh, through the seat and uh, through the handlebars to a lesser extent. Brakes very adequate as we come downhill to this bend. And a very tractable engine, you can tell that the uh, mapping is uh, very much biased towards the mid-range. In fourth gear now and uh, plenty of pull. From uh, all of that uh, 28 brake horsepower that this engine boasts. So yeah, the obvious rival to this bike, the obvious competitor. The bike to which this bike is clearly the uh, understudy, if you like. Is the Honda CRF 300L of Itchy Boots fame, amongst others. A bike I've not ridden, to be fair, but a bike which is two and a half thousand pounds more expensive than this bike. And uh, in the midst of a cost of living crisis, that is of some real significance, I would suggest. Because this bike comes in at 3799 
and uh, I believe the uh, Honda Sierra 300L is more like 6495 or something of that nature so uh, more than two and a half thousand pound more expensive for the Honda there are others of course I uh, leave you to contemplate what other options there would be around about this size and power of motorcycle the Royal Enfield Himalayan would be an obvious contender and uh, uh, of course there are others but uh, yeah very very competitively priced but of course uh, whenever I review a Chinese bike the uh, the country of its origin always becomes a bone of contention and uh, I don't propose to ad address that other than to say what I've said many times in the past and that is if you are to eschew all things Chinese made there will probably be absolutely nothing left in your life whatsoever in your house, in your car, in your motorcycle anywhere so uh, one has to come to terms with that I don't have an issue with it whatsoever so here we are in fifth gear indicated 35 miles per hour and uh, pulling very very strongly indeed bit of a steep hill here and uh, no the bikes the bikes coping with it fine so what sort of bike is this then well I suppose at 3,800 quid basically it's anything you want it to be probably not a lot of good two up I would suggest given the power but not impossible but not over long distances but one up as a, a, a Tora it'd work as a Tora it's a, a lovely comfortable suspension commanding riding position comfortable riding position um, it's a narrow bike so it'd make a, a, a competent commuter it's a frugal bike sort of 70 mile per gallon ish so yeah it'd be a competent commuter uh, a competent off-roader knobbly tyres 21 inch front wheel sport all of that and uh, I, sh I would imagine a great all-rounder uh, notwithstanding that um, it's uh, it's basically a trailer trail bike and that's what you would call it if you would look at it it's a trail bike you wouldn't really call it an adventure bike although you could use it as such of course so I am on the balls of my feet um, it's a very high seat but the suspension does uh, drop considerably uh, we'll look at the numbers on the walk around but the uh, suspension travel at the front is 220 millimeters which uh, is quite a bit and uh, the ground clearance on this bike if you want to go on the rough stuff and we'll try a bit of rough stuff is is 230 millimeters <laughs> yeah good you could get a german shepherd to uh, to uh, walk under this bike or limbo under it maybe i'll try that with eddie so plenty of ground clearance on this here bike uh, LCD display there white on black and as you can see you've got your digital readout of speed at the top you've got the uh, rev counter uh, new gear position indicator and then uh, bottom right there you've got your uh, odometer reading not the clearest of um, LCDs it has to be said but uh, everything you need is on there there isn't a fuel gauge just a fuel light um, so it's a question of using the combination of uh, the odometer and uh, how much of a sloshing noise you can make from the tank uh, by moving the bike side to side the old-fashioned way but the fueling feels fine we're here pootling along at, uh, at low urban traffic speeds and uh, 
there's there's no issues whatsoever no hesitancy nothing unpredictable about it and uh, quite an entertaining note from uh, the stock exhaust on here has to be said right just passing my local here and uh, we'll try her on a bit of the rough stuff right so uh, this is what this bike's made for i suppose with its uh, long travel suspension and uh, 21 inch front wheel and uh, knobbly tyres and uh, certainly coping very competently with this uh, bit of a nightmare of a road I'm not uh, an off-roady person but can't take a bike like this out for you <laughs> and not bring it somewhere like this Yeah, certainly more, more than capable off-road. And let's take it a little bit further off-piste. Off-roader's dream here, of course. But sorry about the mess apple yards. <laughs> I will wash it down for you if you like. Yeah, so a bit of the rough stuff there and uh, dealt with it very, very well indeed. Um, if you're inclined to go off-road on this bike, it has an awful lot going for it. Number one, the suspension. Number two, the uh, tyres. Uh, number three would uh, certainly be the uh, lack of weight and uh, this bike comes in wet at just 158 kilos right so here she is then the Vosges Rally 300 looking every bit the competent off-road trailer there so uh, let's have a look around the bike and talk about some numbers so starting as always at the front wheel it's a 21 inch spoked wheel the uh, brake system there comprises a 265 millimeter single disc with a two piston caliper and uh, the tires there those knobbly tires you can see are timson tires which sounds like a, a Chinese make, but a 21 inch uh, front wheel there. The suspension there going on, we have 41 millimeter upside down forks with uh, 220 millimeters of travel. And that's a lot of travel. Uh, and it does make a big difference when you get on what would otherwise be a very, very tall bike. The suspension sits down nicely, front and rear to allow you to get your feet down. But I'd suggest, if you're, um, shall we say, less than five foot eight, there or thereabouts, you might struggle with this bike. I don't know if there are lower seat options available. Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, that's the uh, front end of the bike there. If we go to the rear, which as you can see, I messed up on that uh, off-road bit. Sorry, Apple Yards. We've got an 18 inch rear wheel. Spoked again, Tim Sun, the make. A double uh, double sided swing arm suspension and the suspension unit there is a mono shock which is adjustable for preload and uh, chain drive of course 
and a 220 millimeter disc there with a single piston caliper. And uh, worth noting that the uh, ABS on this bike is switchable. So that ABS you can see there, you can switch off. Moving on to the engine. And uh, it's a 292cc 28 brake horsepower unit. 28 brake horsepower at 9,000 RPM and 25 Newton meters of torque at 6,500 RPM. And as you can see, it's a single cylinder there, four valve, four stroke, liquid cooled engine. And uh, of course, uh, made by the Lonsin Group, which makes engines for BMW. And uh, this engine, I believe, is a derivation of the Kawasaki KLX 300 engine made under license, as I understand it, by Lonsin. So a tried and tested unit from uh, which this engine is derived. So sharing the same uh, DNA there. Looking overall at the bike's dimensions, like I said, it's a, it's a tall bike. It's a 920 millimeter seat height. The wet weight of the bike, 158 kilograms, and the fuel tank there carries just 11 litres. But uh, at the claimed MPG, that should be enough to give you 150 to 175 miles of range. And uh, the ground clearance there that I alluded to earlier, very substantial, 230 millimetres. So price on the road, this £3,799, uh, as against the uh, Honda CRF, which is uh, £2,500 more. Comes in this colour, the black, black rather, and uh, silver, stroke grey. There's also yellow trim and blue trim available. And what I also like about this bike is... And you do get this with a, with a lot of these Chinese made bikes, you get a lot more as standard. So you get those engine bars come as standard and the hand guards come as standard and uh, a rear rack. So uh, very useful indeed, you don't need to accessorise this bike. So these bikes are imported by MotoGB and of course Apple Yards was bought out by uh, MotoGB last year. And... Uh, is now a Vosges dealership, so get yourself down to Apple Yards in Keithley. Or if you're not in this neck of the woods, any Moto GB dealer will be able to uh, let you have a test ride on, uh, on one of these. So we'll look at the lights. They are standard halogen front lights, LED indicators, and at the rear, LED indicators and an LED rear light there. Keyed ignition, I'm pleased to say. We went through the LCD display earlier, but all the controls are bog standard configuration, both left and right. Nice wide bars, which uh, add to the uh, controllability and manoeuvrability of this bike. So all in all, as a combination of its um, long travel suspension, ground clearance, and uh, relatively modest weight, wide handlebars, very easy bike to handle with confidence. Right then, so let's have a look at me seated upon this year's steed. Clamber aboard. And uh, yeah, very, uh, very tall seat. Now I'm uh, six foot one, uh, 32 and a half inch inseam. Uh, and I weigh 83 kilos, uh, 13 stone. So we'll just pop up the uh, side stand there. It's quite a long side stand, so the bike doesn't lean very far over at all when you pop it on the side stand, uh, which can be a, a good or a bad thing, depending on which way you look at it. Um, because on this ground, certainly the bike's almost vertical with the side stand down. Um, but uh, as you can see, I can just about flat foot, but uh, the majority of that is down to the fact that the suspension uh, drops significantly when I pop my 13 stone on this bike. 
But as you can see, uh, nice wide handlebars, a bit of a screen going on here at the front, uh, non-adjustable, uh, but removable. Um, but a nice, uh, comfortable riding position indeed, and uh, every bit the uh, off-road riding position. Just pop the side stand down again then, so that you can look at the actual riding position of the bike. And uh, as you can see, uh, probably a, what, 90 degree-ish bend in the leg when your feet are on the pegs. And uh, yeah, all day comfortable this bike. And I suppose what it all boils down to at the end of the day with these Chinese bikes is individual perceptions about longevity and durability of the component parts and the fit and finish. The fit and finish looks fine, there is nothing about this bike whatsoever that might induce you to think that it's been built to a price, that it's anywhere below premium. Everything's to, to a, a high standard. And of course, uh, the engine being made by the Lonsing Group um, a group that, that makes engines for BMW, I, I would suggest, can absolutely be relied upon. The, uh, the plain fact is that, that a, a long established and respected mark like BMW are not going to invest their confidence in, uh, in Lonsin if they weren't 100% sure that their engines were up to scratch. So whereas this is a relatively new bike and therefore it's difficult if not impossible to comment about long-term reliability and performance and the availability of parts and accessories for servicing, I think you can draw certain logical conclusions from the fact that it is made by the Lonsing Group and that they have a collaboration with um, such a high profile mark as BMW. So um, yeah, all in all, if you're after an off-road competent bike, for a very reasonable initial capital outlay, this would be the bike for you. The service intervals are 3,000 miles, first service is at 300 miles, subsequent ones are at 3,000 miles or one year, whichever comes around first. And that seems to be a bit of a common theme with uh, MotoGB bikes. Um, but um, if that's what you're after, it's certainly a serious proposition when you consider it's two and a half grand cheaper than uh, than the Honda equivalent. So in conclusion then, what can we say about the Vorge Rally 300 or 300 Rally? Well, first off, you don't need to be worried about this sort of thing. Because the suspension is superb. And the off-road handling is superb, greatly aided by the 158 kilograms of weight. 158 kilograms of weight is pretty low. Most adventure bikes are well over 200 kilos, if not 250 and above. So this is uh, genuinely off-road competent. It's got the right weight and it's got the right handling characteristics. So who's it for? Who is this bike for? Well, I can imagine it appealing to a number of different niches in the market. It's obviously uh, easily A2 compliant. So if you're in that A2 category, if you've just passed your test, and uh, you're attracted to uh, bikes with serious off-road capability as well as good road handling manners then this would certainly should be on your list it's not going to win any races but that said it'll cruise at 70 miles per hour all day long 
claimed top speed is 78 and it's at its most comfortable I would suggest at about 60 miles per hour which is perfect for a bike like this it's pretty frugal 75 to 80 miles per gallon and uh, even on a modest 11 litre tank that should give you 150, 175 miles of range very usable if you're after a budget bike and by that I mean a bike under £4,000 in the UK of course then uh, this bike is definitely worth considering 3,800 quid basically and for that you get included the screen the crash bars the uh, rear rack and the hand guards and on a lot of bikes those are an accessory that you're going to have to pay for later on so full marks there of Vosges So yeah, if you're on a budget, it makes a lot of common sense of this bike. It should be cheap to run, it'll be uh, low insurance, it will be uh, the lower end of the uh, taxation category and uh, I should imagine that maintenance will be a fairly straightforward affair. So if budget's important to you and you do like off-road bikes with road capability or road bikes with off-road capability this could well be on your list for touring well it's mighty comfortable wide bars a bit narrow uh, in the waist this bike quite a narrow seat but that uh, that helps in getting your foot down on what's otherwise a very tall bike um, but all day comfortable. I'm not so sure it would be practicable for long distance two up touring uh, simply because of the uh, limited amount of power on tap. But you could do it. You could do it without a shadow of a doubt. So it'll make a good tourer because uh, I can't imagine that anything terrain or weather wise would stop this bike. And it handles like a dream. I mean, it has that counterintuitive nature of uh, modern tall motorcycles in that it uh, it uh, tracks around bends like it's on rails. Really confidence-inspiring. And uh, that should mean that uh, there's plenty of uh, shits and giggles for you of a weekend if this were your only bike so yeah it's interesting to sort of contemplate where this will appeal but if you've sort of been watching these uh, global adventure uh, programs on YouTube or elsewhere and the likes of Itchy Boots but there are plenty of others aren't there and they, they usually take bikes like this eminently practical uh, in terms of uh, size and weight and uh, off-road capability uh, so if you're into that sort of thing but you don't want to fork out six and a half grand for a Honda CRF 300L this could well be the bike for you I know that Nathan the Postman's uh, reviewed it on a, on a long-term trip and uh, has said uh, that in, in many respects he considers it to be a better bike than the Honda and I see no reason to disagree with him at this point so there we go the Vosges 300 Rally hope that was of some interest to you if it was please click a like please click a subscribe and uh, if you want to ride this bike, give it a test ride, get yourself uh, down to Apple Yards in Keithley. They'll be happy to help you out. 
and uh, yeah in the meantime ride safe be kind and i'll catch you on the next one toodle pip